Thank you. Thank you. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I like it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome to West Coast Word Church, October 15th, 2017. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. Well, this morning I want to teach on the glory of God, and we continue teaching on that. And this morning, we're going to talk about love, faith, and the glory. Love, faith, and the glory. Praise God. So glad you're here. Good to be here. In church, isn't it? Yes. It's good to be part of a church too, isn't it? Yes. Amen. You know, somewhere you can call your home, if you will, you know? Yes. Somewhere you can go and, and, and meet people of like faith. You know, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron, right? And as you, as you go to a church, um, a body of believers that isn't afraid to believe God, isn't afraid to use their faith, isn't afraid to, to expect God to do something good, right? A church that uh, allows the Spirit of God to move and have His way of being, amen? It's very important. These little things, I think, are very important, okay? So, you know, you don't go to a church... I'm going to say this, and, and you're just going to have to get it. <laughs> but you don't go to a church, even necessarily, because you like it. You go to a church because the Spirit of God leads and directs you to that body. Okay? And you go to that church to receive of from the Lord, but also to be a blessing. Amen? Because it isn't what is popular, the purpose or the reason you go to a, an assembly of a, a church. It isn't because it even makes you feel good. I hope the Word of God, the Word of God is good news, and it, it, it does. That is the effect that the Word of God has. But that's not your purpose for going there. Your purpose for going to the church is because the Spirit of the Lord leads you and directs you to there. The Word of God is being preached and ministered, and the Spirit of the Lord moves and has His way of being in there. To me, that's how you, that's how you choose a church. All right? I just, I just leave little things, you know, to teach and to understand because, you know, listen, our flesh, our society has been such a a flesh-driven society. It's such a me society. And so if, 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 the, if what that pastor's preaching at that church doesn't fit into my schedule, well then, you know, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to go back there. No, man, we got to, when we go to a church, we're led by the Spirit of God, and it's like, turn off, all the other things, okay? Because if your true heart's purpose is to hear and receive of the Lord, then you go there not because it's like, well, that was easy. You know, you go there because, wow, that was good. You know, in here. You're ministered to in here. And I know this isn't what's always popular, you know? And I, I, we could attempt to build a church on what is popular, but that isn't going to fly with me Amen. because I'm going to stand before the Lord someday. And I'm going to give an account of what was asked of me to do. And you're not going to be there. And it isn't going to matter the size of how many people came to the, the church. What's going to matter is my obedience to what the Spirit of the Lord directed me to do as the pastor of this church, okay? Guess what? You're going to give account too. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
that's a good day, right? That's not a like, a, oh, I'm going to the principal's office. That's a glorious day. It's a wonderful, I can't wait. I'm like, glory to God, you know? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So, yeah, that, wasn't, that wasn't too hard for you, was it? A little teaching like this, little stuff like this is good for us to know, right? Because sometimes we can just get here and, and minister and, and do the songs and, and leave, but sometimes you just got to like, why are we doing this? And why do I go where I go? Why do I worship the Lord? Why do I do what I do? What is this all about, right? We need to know these things, amen? It needs to be in our heart. Praise the Lord. You have your Bible? Praise God. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Ooh, Say this with me. Heavenly Father, Father come to church today, today to receive spiritual wisdom, to receive spiritual, wisdom spiritual, understanding, spiritual understanding, and truth for my life. For my life. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, I ask you, I ask you to, bear to bear witness with my spirit concerning the revelation, concerning the revelation of God's word. And how to apply it in my life on a regular, daily basis. When I'm at work, when I'm at home, with my free time, how to apply your word to my life. And Lord, in areas of my life where I've been ignorant, confused, and even frustrated, help me to see your ways clearly this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I just thank you for your anointing that is upon your word and upon my lips, that I minister this word with accuracy, integrity, and boldness, that this word comes forth, and that the people that hear this word aren't just hearers of the word, but they're doers of the word, that we apply the living word of God to our lives every day and in every way. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The glory of God is God's plan for mankind to walk and live in his light and his power and his goodness. The glory of God, the Hebrew word kavod, denotes that it is heavy with everything good. The glory of God. The glory of God is, could also be described as the presence of God manifest. The glory of God in the Old Testament, when revealed to the children of Israel, was a cloud by day and a fire by night. The glory of God was manifest as a bright light, shining, extremely light. The glory of God revealed to Paul, as Dr. Dominic was ministering this morning, when he appeared to him, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said there was a light that shone brighter than the noonday sun. When the glory of God comes on the scene, the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, one, one man described the glory of God. He said that the glory of God is as destructive of evil as it is constructive of good. When Adam and Eve sinned, the glory, they were separated from the glory of God. Why? Because now man is, is living in sin. And it is as destructive of evil as it is constructive of good, meaning that if the presence of God would have been in full manifestation with Adam and Eve, it would have destroyed mankind because of his glory and his goodness. Because the glory of God doesn't, doesn't um, put up with sin. Amen. Amen. Come on. Doesn't tolerate it. Okay? That's why we are called to live a holy life. A holy life simply means to live a separated life. And it should be our desire to live a life separated from sin. Amen. Separated even from how the world operates. Amen. Now, when a person gets born again, whoo, 
The Bible says you're a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The Bible says that he makes his abode within us. Where the glory and the presence of God was in a tabernacle, now that glory and the presence of God is inside of us. And that's describing that our, our spirit is so pure and so holy that he would make his abode inside of us. The presence of Almighty God. Christians, being a Christian isn't something just cute. It isn't part of a club. It isn't part of an organization. Being a Christian is one who accepts Jesus Christ, and now God's own spirit makes his abode and dwelling within our heart, within our spirit. And it is a reborn human spirit. It is something that is very extremely powerful for us to understand and to know and to operate and function in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The glory of God. Now, the glory of God can be understood and described and, and, and walked in in degrees. Say degrees. When I say degrees, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a little example like this. I actually, let, let's, let's look at this in the Scripture. It's best shown to you and revealed to you in the Scriptures. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, But whenever someone turns to the Lord, how many of you have turned to the Lord at some point in time in your life? And if you haven't turned to the Lord yet, we will give you that opportunity because we don't just assume that everyone who comes to church has made that turn to the Lord, okay? Because hopefully you're inviting your unsaved friends and people. Amen. Well, you needed Jesus. Why don't they need Jesus? Right? You need a Savior. Guess what? They need a Savior. We're not just talking about going to some religious, I don't know, formality. Man, the world has such a confused idea of church today. Well, hey, you know why? Because we haven't been doing it right. Ouch, amen. Either one is fine right now, okay? What I mean by that, we haven't been walking and demonstrating in the power and the glory of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, okay? This isn't a talent show, right? This isn't a nice speech. It's amazing how many people, and this is, this is I don't hold anything, this is fine because this is where people are at. They don't even know what I do up here. They don't even know what to call it. I, and I kind of think it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny because they're like, that was a really good talk, your deep talk, speak. What, I don't know what you do up there, but that was kind of good what you said. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it was kind of good, you know, because they're just unlearned yeah. of the things of, 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 of church, okay? And unfortunately, you know, I mean, when I grew up, like I said, everybody, I don't know anybody on our entire street and block that didn't go to church. I mean, we all went to different denominations and things like that. But we went to church on Sunday morning. Did you hear me? We went to church on Sunday morning. And you're thinking, well, don't preach to me. I'm here. Hey. <laughs> you're here. We go to church. Christians go to church. Amen. We assemble together because we're told, forsake not the assembling together of the saints. Amen. There is what we talked on Thursday about the fivefold ministry, yes. right? And why God gave the fivefold ministry. Glory to God. Praise God. It's important for our lives. Every one of us. Hallelujah. All right, I'll stop meddling and start preaching now. <laughs> when someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Whew. What a glorious moment. What a glorious day for many of us, right? For the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Freedom. You know, I've determined in my life, I'm going to get up here and minister and preach and teach, and if I... Uh, 
jump around, get a little loud, get a little excited, I'm going to err on the side of being hot and not lukewarm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something about lukewarm that God doesn't like. Amen. I said, there's something about lukewarm that God doesn't like. Well, you know, yeah, we go to church, but, you know, something about that. Something about that he don't like. That lukewarmness has tried to, has tried to creep right into the church, right into the lives of born-again children of God, even spirit-filled people. Let it not happen to you. You keep using your faith. You keep believing God. You keep speaking God's word. You keep confessing God's word. Amen? You keep praying in the spirit. You keep shouting, dancing. Remember those old songs? Some of you know them. When the spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, moves on my heart, I will sing like David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord moves on my heart, I will dance Woo! like David danced. Amen? Remember that? I will dance. I will dance. I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a revelation this morning. I woke up, my little six-year-old comes into my walk-in closet. This is what she does. Daddy, you're awake. Good morning, Daddy. Hop the entire time. I got a revelation of that. That's what a child should be like in the presence of Almighty God. Our Heavenly Father. Come on, don't act religious. In the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No lukewarm. Amen. There's plenty of lukewarm places to go. It shouldn't be our church. It shouldn't be your home. Ooh, I'm meddling again. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now say it like you mean it. There is freedom. Hallelujah. 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 So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. Hmm. When you see the goodness, the glory of the Lord, when you reflect the glory of the Lord, all of us, you know, it's like the enemy is constantly trying to cloud your mind, putting a false veil back over even a believer's mind so they don't see and reflect the glory of the Lord. Oh, I know you're a Christian, but you got problems. <laughs> freedom liberty who said I got a problem I think that one of the biggest problems is the devil amen can see and reflect the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Praise God. Say changed. changed. Listen to the Amplified Bible. It says, and all of us, 
with unveiling face, because we behold, continue to behold in the Word of God, continue to behold in the Word of God, in the Word of God, read your Bible, continue to behold. Tell somebody sitting next to you, make sure you're reading your Bible. Amen. Continue to behold. You don't fold your arms and go, well, I read that. <laughs> Woo! Lukewarmness setting in. You continue to behold. Amen. Continue to behold as in a mirror. Right? Remember we looked at this? We studied this weeks and weeks ago. You don't look into the mirror at home and say, <laughs> Something wrong with the mirror. <laughs> if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you change what you got going on. Yeah. And as you behold the word of God, if your life is aligning up with what God's word says, to begin to make some change. And change in his glorious image. Amen? Are constantly being transfigured into his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor, from one degree of glory, from one degree of glory to another. See, the glory of God, I believe, is revealed in degrees. And I believe as we behold the word, we see a, a part of God that we didn't see before. You can read a scripture and see something you never saw before. And you read it again and you see something you didn't see before. And as you continue to behold, you see more and more and more and more and more. What's it doing? It's transfiguring you. It's changing you and your life. And if you don't like the way your life is, then behold the word and allow his word to change you into that image from one degree to another degree to another degree to another degree. Now in your spirit, you're complete in him. We went over this last week, Sunday and Thursday evening, in him, right? In him. But there are things in our life that we continue to change. Because just because you're born again, beautiful inside, complete inside, amen? There are things on the outside that need some work. Amen. There is. Don't act like there isn't, because there is. But as we behold the word, we learn how to walk in his love. We learn how to walk and live by faith. Listen, the moment you're born again, you don't automatically know exactly how to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't believe me, just go double park behind somebody in a church parking lot. And then you just leave that car there and ride, jump in the other car with your wife and go out to eat. You see how much love they're walking in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember one lady came to this church and she cut somebody off on the way to church and then pulled in right next to her. She went over, repented. They had a good time about it. Hallelujah. We got to develop in our love walk. We got to develop. We develop in our love walk. And we develop in our faith walk too, right? What are we doing? Being transfigured constantly from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. And as we're transfigured, we walk in a greater level of that glory, a greater level of that glory. I can absolutely tell you the truth and for fact that I'm walking in a greater degree of glory than I used to, but I know that I got a long way to go. That I know that there's more, there's more, there's more. But I don't get discouraged about that. I don't get upset about that. T frankly, that gets me excited because I know there's more, there's more, there's more. I want to change. I don't go, well, you know, I'm perfect. God made me perfect and I don't have to change. No, I want to change. I know there's things in my life that, now I know my spirit, man, it's perfect. When I die, boom, in the presence of God. That isn't even a, that isn't even a concern, one of mine. But I want to walk in a greater degree of that glory on this earth. I want to reflect his glory in my life and through my life. Amen? And I want others to be drawn and see the glory of God on my life. I want there to be something different about my life. Amen? Say, me too. Me too. 
Hallelujah. And it says, from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In him, your spirit is. Thank God for that. There is nothing. Praise God that needs to be fixed in that area. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Made righteous before God in Christ Jesus. Now, there are things that the Lord reveals to us through his word that bring us into greater degrees of his glory. In Ephesians chapter 5 here, it mentions this as an example. It says, for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church. Say a glorious church. He says, without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. The prophecy I heard came forth years ago, and I wanted to tell it to you. I'm not telling it to you in whole. I'm telling it to you in part, but it, it's mostly this. So the church is quickly approaching her finest hour. The church will fulfill its ministry in the earth, just as Jesus fulfilled his ministry in the earth. But the church must be taught that she will succeed and not as though she will fail. The body of Christ will change from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got to be taught that we will succeed. You know, I, I, I hear other things out there, and it's almost like this not quite sure if you're going to succeed or not succeed as a Christian. It's almost just like get along with, put up with, and wear the badge as a Christian. Well, anytime the word is taught and there's not faith involved, then what happens is you just kind of, it's all up to you. It's all up to your you know, ability to overcome mentally or something like that. You just not, it's not going to cut it, all right? Faith has to be involved in your Christian walk. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen? So how do we change into his glorious image? Well, first of all, it's the Spirit of the Lord who helps us change. I said it's the Spirit of the Lord who helps us in this process of change. Um, go with me to John chapter 16. We went here first service, sort of impromptu. John chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus is speaking here, and he's enjoy prophesying about what's to come, right? And verse thir um, 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come? How many know he's come? It says, He, who is the Spirit of truth, will guide you. And he will guide you into all truth. Say all truth. all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Say this. He will show me things to come. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to show us things to come. Well, the Bible shows us things to come. And as we read the Word of God, the Spirit of God reveals what he, is, what he has inspired in the book, the Bible, to us and for us. He's showing us things to come. Now, he can show you things to come good, 
And he can reveal and show you things to come not so good for your life. Right? And so, but he's going to reveal and teach you truth. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear about the things to come that are not so good. But for the church, right, the called out ones, Amen. it's good. But the, but the Spirit of God is going to reveal to us what's to come for the world, too. Those who don't serve him. Right. Amen. Amen. It's the good Glory to God. So he says here, let me keep reading. He says, he shall glorify me. Ooh. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He will receive of mine and show it unto you. The Amplified Bible there, I believe it's Amplified, says transmit. Say transmit. transmit. First time I read this years ago, there was, um, yeah, it says disclose and transmit it to you. Cell phones, in fact, I had a Nextel. Remember Nextel, somebody? <laughs> that was a little button push, and that's what you had to wait for, right? And, you know, 20-something years ago, it's pretty impressive, you know, to be able to talk to people around the world, literally on a phone, at least around the United States. And I, when I read that, that transmitting, he will transmit, he will transmit. <laughs> He will disclose. He will reveal. He will show you things to come. Right? The voice of the Spirit of the Lord is transmitting. He is transmitting. You don't have to say, Oh, I need to hear your voice. He is transmitting. I heard it described, I think it was by Kenneth Copeland years ago. He said that uh, <laughs> if you can't pick up a particular radio station, it's not because they're not transmitting the signal. It's because you're not tuned in. And there are a lot of things that are fighting for our attention trying to get us to tune in to what's going on here and tune in to what's going on there. And this group's problem and this group's cause and this group's this, all, all these crazy things going on, right? But there is nothing more important and more valuable than us to tune in to the Holy Spirit. Amen? So how do we walk and change from one degree of glory to another? By the Spirit. Allowing him to transmit into our lives as we receive of him. Amen. He'll show you things to come. Listen, I'm convinced, listen to this, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you in your spirit what house to buy, what car to buy, where to work, and most importantly, I believe, where to go to church Amen. and who's to be your pastor. Yes. <laughs> I believe he'll do that. And I believe he'll reveal to you things that you had no idea that he cared about. You know, remember the story? I just, it's one of my favorite stories, but George Washington Carver, right? This man is a black man in the South, and, and he, born into a slave family, and he's adopted, and this man invented over 300 inventions of just the, uh, I believe it was the soybean, some the sweet potato, the soybean, the peanut. The peanut was a big one. This guy, glue, rubber, I mean, he was, he, milk out of a peanut. You can read about him, hundreds and hundreds of inventions. The turn of the century, He's being courted by the biggest industries in the United States of America, offering him, at that time, over $100,000 a year just to come work for him. What's going on? How is he getting this stuff? How has he learned? Went before Congress and began to talk about all these things. He had like a, a set period of time that you're allowed to go before and, and, and talk about what you're working on, and they 
and they gave him more, and they gave him more, and they gave him more. Then they invited him back for longer. Well, how did he get all those things? He got those things and those inventions by the Spirit of the Lord. He said he, he called his little place where he would go and, and, and learn of these things, he called it God's little workshop. And he would go in there with zero textbooks. No, no, no textbooks, no chemistry books. He would go in there with a pencil, paper, and his Bible. And he would ask of the Lord how to do something. And he said it was like, the, it's like God would pull back a curtain and would reveal to him what he needed to know and how to take it apart and dissect it and how to come up with these things. He revolutionized the South with these inventions. He changed the world. How did all that happen? How was that possible? One man humbled himself and sought the Lord, and the Lord transmitted to him, disclosed to him, and revealed to him. That access is available. I believe that he was tapping into degrees of the glory of God that was not common to man. It went beyond what was common sense. God, by the Spirit of God, wants us to go beyond common sense. I look at common sense as the groundwork. It's like the bottom of where we should be operating. Because that's just what's common. But I believe the Spirit of the Lord can take you and lead you beyond what is just common into what we call the supernatural. Right. Supernatural is a woo, woo, okay, that's what the world tries to, that's, that's their idea of the supernatural. The supernatural is just beyond what is natural. It is beyond what is common. Yeah. It is beyond what mind, the intellect says is, or thinks is possible. There's more that is possible that is beyond what you can think that is possible. Amen. Everything is operated by spiritual laws. Everything. God has spiritual laws that set up and, 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 and orchestrate all of being, all that exists. And when you tap in to the, to the realm of the spirit, things are revealed to you in the realm of the spirit to give you understanding of the natural. When you want to go beyond what is naturally common, see, your paycheck isn't your limitation for your income. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give on your bosom. That doesn't make sense to the natural. But in the realm of the spirit, God can do things that you had no idea. He can cause income to come into your life beyond your paycheck, beyond your pension. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching and meddling at the same time now, okay? Well, don't limit God. God's, God created the universe. Come on, get, give me a break, all right? God can bless and increase you in every way, spirit, soul, body, mentally, physically, and financially. He's the whole package. It's all in him. And the spirit of the Lord wants to disclose and transmit and reveal to us truth on every matter. All right. Change from his glory. The other thing is, is operating and living and walking in the God kind of love. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4. Say the God kind of love. The God kind of love is not the world's kind of love. So get over it. Okay? He don't love me anymore. He probably never loved you to begin with. He said love, but lo he, didn't, he doesn't know love. And if you don't know love, then he can't demonstrate love because he didn't know what love was to begin with. He used the word love because it was popular. He kind of liked you a little bit, but he didn't love you. Amen. Well, I got my feelings hurt. Well, maybe you got involved deeper than you were supposed to get involved to begin with. Okay. Hallelujah. No, don't preach like that now. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Hey, man, you're precious. Right? We teach our young people they're precious. Their body is precious. Right? You don't just give yourself to anyone. That, there's kids in the room. It has become so casual. And it's wrong. Oh, 
Glory to God. Thank you for the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's on television and internet and all over the place. Guard your heart and teach your children how to guard their heart. Amen. Parents, it starts with you. Because they're in, they're in their mind, they're thinking, well, you watch it. Mm -hmm. God kind of love. You want to operate and go from one degree of glory to another degree of glory? Then learn to walk and live in the God kind of love. Say the God kind of love. So here it is. Love, God kind of love, because God is love. Endures long. Oh, yeah, I endure long. Okay, good. We'll keep going. We didn't get you yet, but we will get you. <laughs> is patient. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I got to work on that a little bit. And kind. It's kind. The God kind of love is kind. Man, there are some rude people in the world today. But does that give you an excuse to be rude? Right? Love is never envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited or arrogant or inflated with pride. We talked about that last week, right? Humility and the glory. It is not rude or unmannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. You can be right but wrong in being right. Well, I'm just right about this and I know it. Yeah, but you're being rude and unmannerly and you insist that you're right about everything. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It's okay as a believer, <laughs> I hope you get this in the right way, to have a short memory when somebody does something wrong to you. I'm going to say that again. There's a thing when I played sports and I played quarterback, I said a good quarterback has a short memory. What that means is when you make a mistake, forget it. And don't ponder about it. And don't sit there and think about it. Because you're more apt to make another mistake if you're still thinking about the last mistake you made. And if you make two mistakes, forget about that one too. As Christians, we need to be quick to forgive and walk in forgiveness. Amen? Don't be resentful. Don't be resentful. It takes no account. How many accounts? <laughs> no account. Of evil done to it. Well, you know what you did to me last time. You're keeping a count. You're keeping a log. You hurt me and you just keep hurting me. I was listening to a minister, a woman by the name of Billy Brim. She's 80 years of age. Wonderful teacher of the gospel. She's talking about her relationship with her husband. And her husband went home to be with the Lord years ago. And she said, we loved each other. She said, oh, we were, we were just absolutely in love with each other. And they had four beautiful children. And she said, he was tall, dark hair, handsome. And he loved me. He absolutely loved me. And she said, there was one thing about him. He never would remember my birthday. <laughs> and... One morning I woke up, I was all excited, hoping he'd remember my birthday, and I made him breakfast and set breakfast down. He ate his breakfast, went off to work, and he, he, and he worked close to home, came home for lunch, hoping that maybe at lunchtime he brought her some flowers, just some mention of her birthday, nothing. By the time he came home, she had the, draw, the blinds all drawn. She had cried her eyes out. She was just sobbing you know, all day long, and... and 
and I don't even remember, oh yeah, I had made something or whatever for him, and he goes, what's wrong with you? Is it your birthday or something? <laughs> but she had been working for Brother Kenneth e. Hagen, Sr., and she was transcribing things, and he was teaching on the love of God. And she's like, oh, the love of God, I got this, I know this, I grew up in church, I love God, God loves me, I love people. And she said, he began to break this down in the Amplified Bible like this, and this, this account, these, these different points, all of a sudden started hitting home on her. And he said, listen, if you're struggling in any of these areas, he said, write it down, keep it before you, go to it, recall it. And so she began to put these things this, this, this chapter, and, these, and it highlight the points that she was really challenged with concerning her husband, because she said, I loved him, and I know he loved me. We had a wonderful relationship, but this was just so difficult for me, and it would, get, it would try to be a problem in our marriage, you know? And so she wrote them down. She wrote it down inside of her uh, uh, cupboard, and he didn't know they were there. And any time she would feel like, she would go to that cupboard and she'd open it up and she'd read it. No account, suffered wrong, not touchy, not resentful. Not very good. And one day she made this chili and it was one of his favorite things and she made this cornbread and he loved this cornbread and she just made it just right. It was just, just browned on it just right and, and, and he made this chili and he goes, do you have some crackers? She goes, no, but I made your favorite cornbread. He goes, I don't really want cornbread. Do you have some crackers? She said she walked over to that cupboard, opened that cupboard. <laughs> Love is not touchy. It's not regretful. Not regretful. <laughs> and she said, I had been doing this now for a number of months, but all of a sudden, in a moment, it changed in my heart. And all of a sudden, she said, I had this overwhelming desire and urge to get this man crackers. <laughs> she did. And she said she didn't have any. She said, I'll be right back. And she got in her car, and she quickly drove down the road. And as she's walking out, he said, I think we're out of coffee, too. Okay? So she's driving down the road. She's going to get him crackers. She walks to the supermarket real quick, briskly walking. All of a sudden, something changed in her heart. And she said back in the day, they would take butcher paper, you know, the white paper, and they would write the specials. And they'd stick them on the front door of the supermarket. She walks up to that supermarket on that door and said, today only, free coffee and crackers. <laughs> she walked in there, grabbed coffee, crackers, walked out, didn't pay anything. She said, it was like the Lord was revealing to me. She said, I couldn't wait to bring him crackers. She said, that day changed our marriage forever. Not touchy. What is she doing? She's increasing in that glory. From one degree to another degree to another degree. As she was beholding the word of God for her life. A lot of people want other people fixed. You need to work on right here. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best. Say, believe the best. Of how many people? Every person. Even the politicians you disagree with. Hey! Hey, 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 don't, 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 don't section off a part of your heart for politics. Oh, man. Amen. <laughs> That's why God gave you a pastor. You notice how that's tried to happen? And then what gives reason for it is there'll be this cause and that cause and this cause, and you'll have all these little sections in your heart. And you'll treat these different sections differently. Wrong. You treat them all the same with the love of God. Every person. 
believe the best of how many people? Even if the media tells you something different? Amen. If they're talking trash about somebody, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Because my job is to believe the best of every person. Amen? You know when you do that, you can hear from the Spirit of God more accurately. Because what the enemy tries to do is get people with all these preconceived ideas of who other people are. And so you make judgment and decision. And the dangerous part is, is then you cast a vote based on a preconceived judgment that you heard someone else say about someone else. But when you refuse to walk in that judgmental mindset and attitude and you, and you say, hey, I'm going to believe the best of every person. I'm going to hear from the Spirit of God. I'm going to look at the platform that these people are standing on, what they believe, their core values. I'm going to make my judge, I'm going to cast my vote based on that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you to walk in love. God tells us to walk in love. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstance, endures everything without weakening. Another thing, I'm going to quickly, I'm going to try to, boy, go to, go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 25. You got time for one more point here? I'll try to make it quick. I know we're a little, a little over. Another thing here is walking and living by faith. It'll cause us to walk in a greater degree of God's glory. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go quickly through this so you can follow along, Numbers 13, 25. But this is where Israel crossed over the Red Sea. Say miracle. miracle. Say the glory of God. Glory. <laughs> and they're coming into this land. They come up to this land that God had promised them. And what does Moses do? Moses sends out 12 leaders by the instruction of God to go and spy out and explore the land, right? And they go for 40 days. And uh, the men return, and verse 26, it says, and I'm reading New Living Translation this time, typically I do King James. It says, to Moses and Aaron, to the whole congregation of Kadesh, and to the wilderness of Perdan, they, re- uh, Perdan, they reported to the whole community, say whole community, Amen. what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken of the land. And what this was their report to Moses. We entered the land which you sent us to explore. It is indeed a bountiful co- uh, country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here are the kind of fruit that it produces. And we know from the description of the Bible that one cluster of grapes had to be held across a pole of two men to be able to carry it. That is how bountiful this land was, okay? This is amazing, all right? Slaves in Egypt, going through the wilderness, and now you see this place. Pretty good, all right? Now... It says, but the people, here's where they get in trouble, okay? But, but the people, but the people, you know, I'm, I've been trying to get a raise, but the people, I've been trying to, in, in, trying to get ahead a little bit, but, but, the, but, but the people, okay. Remember, if someone is your problem, that's your problem. I'm going to say that again. If you think someone else is your problem, that's your problem. Well, it's quiet in this church. But the people living there are powerful. Their towns are large and fortified. We even saw the giants there, the descendants of Anak, and the Malachites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. He said, let us go up at once, and take the land. We certainly can conquer it. Amen. But the other men who explored the land with them disagreed. So we can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report. I said they spread this bad report. The King James says it's an evil report. Listen, there are news outlets that are spreading Bad reports. 24 hours a day, seven days a week almost. It's ridiculous. 
They spread this bad, evil report about the, about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour, will devour, see, look at where they're at, will devour, see, it takes faith to walk in the glory, will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw are huge. We even saw the giants there. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought, too. Now they're just assuming what they think. Yeah. Now, these leaders that came back, spying out this land, had two choices. One, they could make their decisions based on what they saw, circumstantial evidence, or two, they could make their decision based on what God said. God had already told them that this was their land. God cannot lie. Right. Amen. When God said it, that settled it. It was their land to take. And this holds true for our life today. Because we have God's word. Yes. Don't we? And we can look at circumstantial evidence and we can say, you know what, I'm going to go with the circumstantial evidence. Or we can look at God's word and say, you know what, the circumstances don't line up with that yet, but I'm going to continue to behold God's word. Amen. And I'm going to allow myself to be changed and transfigured until my life looks like God's word rather than what the circumstantial evidence yeah. says. Amen. Now look at where fear and unbelief will take a person. Remember, there was like 2.5 to 3 million Israelites here, okay? And it says, in the whole community, say 2.5 million. It says the whole community began weeping aloud. Can you imagine what that sounded like? I mean, one of my kids starts nagging. I'm like, can we, can we stop? I can't stand that. Can you imagine 2.5 million people? That's what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're weeping aloud, crying all night. Yikes. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle and our wives, our little ones will be carried off as plunder? Wouldn't it be better for us to die in Egypt? And they begin to plot amongst themselves. Let us choose a new leader. <laughs> and go back to the bondage of Egypt. You know what they say today? Honey, let's go to a different church. Let's go to a different church where, you know, the pastor isn't all hung up on faith and Confessing the word. You know, I don't like talking in church. I like being quiet. You know, let's go to a church where I can get in, get out, and be in the golf course or on the boat by noon. You know, because once the Spirit of God moves in that place, man, you never know what time you're going to get out of it. <laughs> right? That's what they say now. Before they said, let's choose another leader. Now they just go get another leader. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> What's interesting is Moses and Aaron fell down on the ground. I'm going to go to verse 9. Do not rebel against the Lord. Don't be afraid of the people of the land. They're only helpless prey to us. They have no protection. But the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. That's where fear will take a person. And that's what we're seeing in the United States of America today. This hatred, this, it's fear. Hmm. Look what happened next. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites, the tabernacle. I believe there's a great setup for the glorious church in earth today. I believe that too. Amen. Just like the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all these Israelites when they were grumbling, complaining, and ready to kill these guys, 
<laughs> suddenly, the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. All consuming fire. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to Moses, How long? Will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them. I'll tell you what. When the glorious presence of the Lord appeared, I guarantee you there were some rocks being dropped. Because it said that they all began to pick up rocks to stone Joshua and Caleb. And all of a sudden, thud, thud, Right? Because the glorious presence of the Lord was there. Why? Because God was not pleased with their unbelief. Do you hear me? God was not pleased with their unbelief. And we know that Moses appealed to God on their behalf. And the verse 21 says, but as surely as I live, well, verse 20 says, The Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. But as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory. Now, one of these people will enter into that land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But once again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. Listen, don't sit here and think that this is some Old Testament story and it doesn't apply to your New Testament life. Because right. we never stop obeying and listening to the voice of God. To say that means you stop listening and reading the Bible and following what it says. Verse 24 says, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude. Remember, they said, we're able to go up at once. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's believe God for your miracle. The men and women that stand up here and pray at the close of the service, I don't pick them because they're cute. They're probably cute, I guess. But I pick them. I pray about it, and I choose them because I know that they'll believe God. I know that they'll pray with you and believe God. They aren't going to sit here and just settle for like, well, you know, and again, tell you some, some story about how God is working, doing this to you. They're going to pray, they're going to use faith, and they're going to believe God. It's very important who you choose as leaders and as elders of your church. Amen. Caleb had a different attitude, it said, than the others. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of the land. Believing, they walked in that glorious land. Because they believed, because Caleb believed, not only he, but his children. I'm standing up here ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ because my parents chose to believe that Jesus is Lord Amen. and refuse to give up living by faith. Amen? Amen? And I'm telling you, you may have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, refuse to walk any other way and to live any other way than by faith. Refuse to walk and live any other way but in the love of God. That love of God, you walk and live in it, even if it feels like it hurts sometime, you walk and live in the love of God. God desires for us to simply take him at his word, believe him, trust him, follow him, and take the land. Yeah, Amen? Exactly. Caleb's faith connected him to the God's glory. Remember, kavod, good, heavy with everything good. That land was heavy with everything good. Yeah. There's a reason that they gave the example that it took two men to carry the grapes. Heavy. Heavy with what? Good. Caleb experienced that good land. His family experienced 
that good land. I'm living in the benefits of my parents' faith. I believe that. And you say, well, my parents didn't have that kind of faith. Well, you can walk and experience it. Caleb experienced it, but so did his children, and so did his grandchildren and his descendants. Start somewhere. Let it start with you. Let it carry on from generation to generation to generation. This is not old-fashioned. This never becomes obsolete. It never fades out. And by the way, love never fails. Did you get something out of this? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Caleb simply fouled God, honored God, trusted God, and he didn't let the devil talk him out of it. Don't let the devil talk you out of the promises of God. Don't let him talk you out of the word of God, right? And we can believe God right in the face of insurmountable giant circumstances. It might look so big. Trust the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Surely you have bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. Lord, I just pray right now for healing in this place, healing in physical bodies, healing in in emotions and relationships, correction, wrong thinking, your word says that you, I said, I pray that you prosper in all things, that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the great examples in the Bible, Joshua and Caleb. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the greatest example that we have, Jesus Christ. That we can walk in your glory, live in your glory. Reflect your glory. Behold your glory. We are the glorious church. And our desire is to increase in your glory from one degree of glory to another degree of glory as we continue to behold your word for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please, uh, uh, prayer couples, if you come forward at this time, be available for the people. Or if you need prayer in any area of your life, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please come forward. Let us pray with you. Let us join our faith with you for your miracle. Amen? Well, guess what? You're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. blessed. He made me that way. way. Say, I'm the head, head. not the tail. Above, Above. not beneath. beneath. Blessed going in. Blessed going going out. Blessed in the field. Blessed in the city. Everything I set my hands to prospers. I am the lender, not the borrower, and you're good looking. You're dismissed. (laughs) Hallelujah.
Father, I just want to make you glad. I just want to move your heart, God. Give you all I am. I just want to bless you. I just want to make you glad. I just want to move your heart, God. Give you all I am. It's by your you. I just want to move. 